Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is a video on how to, I guess it's a workflow video, basically, on on how I, how I move from the time my card comes into, into my card reader until I've, I finally have sort of finished with my photos in that folder for that particular day. So think of it as a time, sh a time snap, you know, I sit down on my computer, I, I could spend between, you know, one and two hours, depending on how many photos, uh, just to get myself to a point where I'm organized enough that um, I can carry on and then I can always pick up things later that I have missed. I think that's the real point is that you don't have to do everything at once. And also that, that um, this whole process with Lightroom and, and um, analyzing and culling and, and, and um, you know, processing your photos, this is a, it's not a linear one at all. It's uh, anything can happen at any time, but there is some structure to it. And I think that's what I'm trying to do is to try to um, sort of suggest how, how you have some structure involved here. So let's just start maybe with the import dialog box. And I'm not going to uh, talk about everything in this dialog box and how it works. I'm just going to go through in, a, in terms of how I use it. Um, first of all, you have to realize that the import dialog box is, stays just as it is the last time you left it. So if the last time you added photos to the catalog without moving them, then, then you can't expect uh, it to do something different, uh, like copy them as DNGs and um, move them to a new location and convert them to a DNG. So it's like, I always tell people about computers. You have to know how something works. You can't expect it to do something that it's not meant to do. Um, and that's what the case is here. So, for example, we're going to bring something in, and typically I'm going to bring in photos from my card as um, just standard raw files. Um, and I want to keep them as raw files, and I want them to be to show up in my folder in my library where I want them to be. So, on the right side here uh, in the panel, you've got file handling. And so, I will bring them in and copy them to a new location, import them, and convert them to a DNG. Um, so at the top, you have uh, this box called Build Previews. I always just build standard previews, because if I want to build a one-on-one -on -one preview on a few photos later, I'll do it. And I'd rather do that after I've culled my photos, so I don't have to spend time having to create one-on-one -on -one previews for everything that I have and then I'm not even going to use those photos or look at those folders that have one-on-one -one previews. So let's keep them at standard. I don't build smart previews. I, honestly, I don't even know what they are and uh, and I, I'm, I'm sure that if I if someone told me, maybe, maybe I might use them, but I like to keep things simple. I don't worry about importing suspected duplicates because I'm importing everything straight out of my card and that's it. I don't make second copies to anything because that is a good way towards having duplication. If you don't know where those folders are going and they end up somewhere you don't want them to be, you're going to end up with, you know, 360 photos instead of 150 photos somewhere. And if you haven't been paying attention where it's going, that's the problem. You have to pay attention where things are going. I don't add anything to a collection because I'm adding things to a collection later when I decide they belong in a collection. I will rename files. Um, I use the camera original file uh, template and I might explain that later on what that means to me um, but at this point know that you can you can name your files um, before they come in and that can be handy or that can be disastrous depending on how you how you organize it. Um, I just don't worry about start numbers. I don't worry about numbers, period. And that'll become evident as we go along. Um, and here's the example of, of my camera original file dialog um, uh, template. Uh, it's, it has the year and it's untitled. 
So it comes in as untitled, which is nice. Uh, because then, then I can set up that up in my collections as a smart collection, which says, um, will tell me which photos I have entitled. Um, and because I might want to title them Aunt Mary's Wedding, and I might, but I might want just to just title them Cam Original File to indicate that it was a file that nothing has been done to it and it's just an original DNG, if that makes sense. Uh, leave my extensions as they are. Who cares? Uh, it, it's, it'll be DNG or something. Um, and then development settings, I, I don't do anything because I bring in raw files and I want everything to have all the data possible and I want to be in control of the presets that I put in at the time that I'm developing the photograph. Um, I don't put any keywords in. I do have a destination. I'd like to put them into the subfolder under... Uh, if you watched my last video, everything of, of mine is under Blu-rays, and so um, I will select the latest Blu-ray, and then put in the date, and then a brief description of what that is, and that will put it in a hierarchy so that the last um, um, import is going to be at the bottom because of the date, and then I will have a, a description for what that uh, particular group of photos is nothing fancy downtown yard work snow you know just uh, Betty shoot of Betty whatever it is and that's it that's how I set up my uh, import dialogue so when we get back into here um, so these are just a bunch of photos of my yard they're just random photos on a lousy day it was kind of you know overcast um, but you just never know because for me, I take photos of my yard every year. Um, it's quite a spectacular yard. Uh, I'm not, you know, it's just it's my, my 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 wife and I have created this, and I, and it's I find it quite lovely. Uh, but the problem is, is that um, you got to get the shot when you get the shot. And so I might just wander around the yard, take a whole bunch of shots, and then come in here and decide whether any of them are worthy. So. That's not much different than what you do in any other circumstance, whether you're in the forest taking a bunch of, you know, wildflower pictures or you're, you're taking a bunch of pictures downtown and uh, street shots or whatever. So my process is that um, I want to get rid of all the garbage because for me it's always garbage in, garbage out. And I think, I think part of it is, is that um, I think we have to get tuned in to... Um, how we look at our photos. We have to get tuned into the fact that, have I taken a, a photo of, of a rose before in my yard? Yes, I have. Um, does this rose, how does this rose stack up to those roses? Well, you know, it's probably a two compared to a five. And um, is, is, this, um, is this photo, you know, worthy of other photos I, I might have envisioned or, you know, any kind of criteria that you have? It's not good to to be going on feeling like I love the feel of this of this whatever or or this well maybe that's just me but uh, and maybe feeling is a good thing but you you have to have your criteria straight before you even tack this and then and then it should be a simple process for example we'll just look at this we have all these uh, pictures of lupins there's lupins here I'm gonna go already all the way down to here and exclude these roses and is there any other lupins? Uh, there's one there. Okay, that, uh, that's pretty good. Then I, I might just go into my um, survey mode or whatever mode you want and full screen. And then I'll look at these photos and I'll say, okay, uh, that's a decent photo, but look at, look at all of this um, stuff poking out of the head of this one here. And this one here, oh, same thing, right? Look at that, I don't like that. So, or, or it could be focus issues, or it could be, oh, we got another one in there. And this one here, again, this. So, and, and I have this. So I, I had this problem where I didn't shift my, you know, camera over just enough to exclude these things in the background. This is bad, but it's boring because there's nothing in here but just this. Um, and it's, there's, it's kind of lonely. There's no real, you know, I was trying to, to, shoot all these little guys here and see if they had any interest. Well, they don't. I think this is the most interesting shot of all of those. <coughs> we, we can go through them again. Um, 
that's how quickly I like to do it. I don't want to, I don't want to spend my whole day trying to think, oh, well, you know, is it in focus? Uh, sorry, <laughs> is it in focus? Uh, is it, um, is it, what's the composition? But I am thinking about those things. This one has the best composition, the best focus, the best lighting, uh, the, uh, you know, good exposure. I don't like this behind here, but it's the best of all of the bunch. So I will simply go to my grid view and I will select this one or I'll select, excuse me, I'll select these. And there's one more. And I will delete them right away. And I'll give it this, well, I did it earlier, so I gave it a two star. And, and also I have to admit that I, I think I probably developed, I did some development on it too. So I might have looked at it first and thought, that is possibilities. I'm going to see what it looks like if I just hit auto. Often that is enough to just allow you to interpret the difference between the, G, the D and G and something that has had some, you know, just like a JPEG does, where they, except JPEGs take data away, uh, and this is non-destructive, but it gives you the idea of, oh, it has possibilities. That's not what I would do for adjustments, but this has possibilities. And so um, I end up with this one photo out of, I don't know, 10. And I will do that for everything. Like, for example, I took all these beautiful pi beautiful pictures. I took these pictures of these photos. My wife likes to put things on the windowsill. And I often take things on the windowsill that she's done there. But these are all really boring. And that's boring because it's, it's overexposed. It's just boring, period. And so is that. 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 Oh. This is interesting, so I better check it out for focus and so on. But it wasn't in f it, the depth of field was not good. And again, the depth of field was terrible here. This one's not in focus, and this is, and this isn't. Uh, um, again, and boring and possibilities. I found out later though that the rocks aren't in focus, so it's 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 no good either. And no boring, 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 boring. Uh, you know, one single flower no 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 so you see what I mean uh, even though you're trying to do something interesting um, you're I'm for example let's just take this one here even if I adjusted it the sheds not in focus there's a much better f photo right here I know I took uh, earlier well and this one here here it is can that compare to that not a chance. So you have to have this kind of a memory of what are the things that you have had in the past and not be nostalgic about, oh, that's just such a lovely picture. I, I'm going to save that one, even though it's, you know, oh, it's not quite in focus. Uh, that's not good criteria uh, making. Um, and I'm going to just go right from here. Uh, let's see. What was the last thing we looked at? I know I have better photos of this and better photos of that. So we'll go to here and just delete all those. And uh, now we're dealing with, uh, we know these are, aren't any good. And we know that, um, well, I can look at these and I know I have all kinds of photos of, of this particular flower. Um, and I have gone through these before. Like this one here is just too messy. There's only one one thing in focus, and it's not interesting. This is too linear. This is I don't know too circular. All the stuff around the outside, and I I just know that I have better pictures than that already. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna delete all those from here to here. And remember, delete them from your disk. Don't just remove them because that can create a big problem because of what it means. Like, let's say, for example, and I know that these are no good either. This has possibilities. And actually, you can see I've already adjusted it and cropped it and so on. But I, I know I have way better photos than that. So let's say we wanted to um, get rid of all of these from here. Remove photos. If you remove them here, it removes them. It doesn't delete them from the catalog. And all that does is it puts them in, if you watch my previous video, video in your zeros down here. And that's a bad idea. 
because then all you're doing is you're just creating more garbage that you've already decided you want to delete and you haven't deleted them and you're doing it because you're afraid of losing it well you know what you are losing it because it's garbage and you need to delete it and game of the roses I can go through I, I've already uh, gone through these earlier and I found two out of here that I like and the reason I like them is that I thought this would look nice in the square format because it's not a good composition and this one here as well and I thought well maybe I could put that on a card to somebody like a or something so it has some use you could put it in a category that's cards or you could um, or whatever but remember the photos have to live where they live you don't want to move them around you just want to have them stay there in their folders and uh, and I could have a folder that says cards and these could go in here and, and and then I could delete them from from that that folder but remember if something is in uh, a collection let's say we made a collection of these uh, down here I'll just create them right now quickly uh, create a collection we're going to call it uh, cards okay and we'll include the, include these photos there they are the problem is if I click on this card and I want to remove it from the oh wait a minute I gotta go back I did the wrong thing okay so let's say we deselect both of these I click on this one here and I say I want to I want to um, well I can I can remove it from the collection oh I know I'm sorry if it's in a smart collection you can't delete a photo from a smart collection we can remove it from a collection we can't delete it from a collection. So you have to realize that these 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 photos, if you have not starred them, this will be in three and this will be in zero right now. I, I would think it's probably worth three. Um, you can't delete them from a smart collection. If we wanted to delete a photo, there they are. They're now in a in a in a in the five star, uh, three star collection. Uh, if I wanted to delete it from here by removing it, it says you can't delete a photo directly from a smart collection but you can because if you just say that this photo is not it's an X right so it's a it's a rejected photo you can leave here and go to the folder in the library and then go up to library and um, uh, I'm just trying to think where it is it's um, Yeah, here it is. It's under photo. Uh, delete the rejected photo. So if the photo is in a, in a smart collection, if it's been started, it's going to end up in, in one of my smart collections, which you'll see in my previous video. Um, the the photo can, re can be deleted from here because it has to be deleted from its folder, right? And the, this is how you find where it is in, in its folder because it was it was a uh, you know it's been starred it, and it, even if it's a zero that's still a, ca a smart cl uh, category a collection or sorry smart um, collection and you can delete your zeros from your smart collections as well but they have to be you have to go to the folder in the library to do it and that's another reason why you don't want to have a lot of a lot of photos in your zeros um, uh, that that you should have deleted in the first place because the best place to delete your photos is straight off your 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 import right here so I've already looked at these and there's I'm gonna keep this one I'm gonna keep this one and I'm going to go down to the end here select them all uh, deselect this one with the command and deselect this one right click and remove all these photos and so here you are I did a photo shoot in my backyard. Oh, I, that's not rejected. I did a photo shoot in my backyard with 69 photos, and I got three. And now, and and three of these are a three, and one is a two. And so I've deleted all the crap there. I don't have any zeros. I could have some zeros, um, and and that's that's not a problem because um, it means that I can delete them later at some other time and basically that's how i really go through my photos i do it quite quickly as you can see i i don't spend a lot of time you know there's sometimes maybe when there's if there's five photos of you know similar um 
flower. I'll, I'll go through it. Uh, like I, I did go through this one here. Um, because I think I had three of these and I wanted to make sure are, are any of the drops in focus? You know, this is not coming up yet because it's something about the, um, maybe the preview wasn't, um, there you go. So the preview wasn't fully realized. And this one's been sharpened, I, I think. I think it's good enough for for the purposes I want it for, for four by six and a card to somebody. So I think that's pretty much all I uh, is about what I do, and I, um, I I would suggest you looking at my previous video on how I organize um, my photos between my f my folders, and we'll just um, bring this up my folders my collections to be able to find whatever I want and make sure that I haven't lost anything because anything that I have not deleted is going to end up as a zero. Okay, folks, um, thank you for listening and we'll see you again.